One, two, three, four. There's a song of praise on our lips. There's a song of joy in our hearts. We're believing. We're believing. Believing that the promise is true. Living a life that is new. We're believing in you. Earth below and heaven above. Praise you for your The promise is true. There's a song of praise on our lips, there's a song of joy in our hearts, we're believing, we're believing, believing that the promise is true, and living out a life that is new, we're believing in you, we're believing.
Good morning. Good morning. Warm welcome to our service here at Halberton United Church. My name is Gwen Atkinson and I'm a member here at Halberton. And a very warm welcome to whoever is out there watching this online. <clears throat> Whatever day or time of the week you are watching us, your presence is a blessing to us. To open our service, please join me as we re say together our opening prayer, which you'll find printed on the screen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we thank you for those who chose the way of Jesus Christ. In the midst of trial, they held out hope. In the midst of hatred, they kindled love. In the midst of persecutions, they witnessed to your power. There are two slides there. In the midst of despair, they clung to your promise. Lord, give us courage to follow in their steps. With your love and faithfulness, we will at all times praise you through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thanks, Gwen. Oh, get this off. And morning, everybody. Here, there, ever. Maybe I. Where should I stand? I should stand about here. That's okay. <clears throat> morning, folks. We've got about twenty-one or two people here present today, and a bunch of folks online. Um. I see Peggy, Cheryl, Mott, Russell, Jen, Burke, and Paul. Probably Lisa Harrison, Joy Cooper. Uh, Ernie and Linda Collette. Ernie is asking us to pray for a pain-free future for Linda and I, and he. So we'll put them on our prayer list today. Jan Cox, Jan Wayne, and Alan Galt. Greetings from Kevin Monahan, Alan and Sharon, also from West Brome in the eastern townships of Quebec. Anybody ever heard of West Brome? Okay, okay, that's a place. Okay. <laughs> Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> just don't know your Quebec very well. Two hours from Montreal. Two hours from Montreal. All right. uh, Bonnie and Eunice Pierce up in Sudbury. Welcome, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so announcements. There weren't a lot of announcements. Uh, 
and we didn't get one in about um, next Sunday, 1.30 at the Minden Fairgrounds is a gospel, <clears throat> gospel concert. So it's uh, with, uh, uh, help me out here. The hot, the hot country hot flashes, right? So, so uh, and, and friends. So Dora, Doris um, Robertson, she plays with me in uh, Lachlan. She's one of them. She's uh, she's a lot of fun to play with, and so that's that's next next Sunday, week today, one thirty at the Minden Fairgrounds, and it's proceeds. It's by donation proceeds towards the the Halliburton County Fair. <clears throat> so that's one thing. The other thing is that I don't know how many of you knew Marion Sedgwick, but she was a big part of the pastor charge and of. Uh, the, the Lachlan Church. So she died about two and a half years ago. We had her service on Wednesday at Lachlan Church, big full full church, and it was um, it was quite interesting. Her her family basically did the service. Uh, her grand nephew Timothy Wisnicki is uh, a oh. c- candidate for the ministry of the United Church of Canada. So he's done. He's got. He's graduated from school. He's off to PEI to do two years of internship. But he preached, and he and his brother and his wife sang a trio a cappella, which is pretty, pretty, pretty sweet. Very good. They're very like, they're, you watched it, yeah, I guess it's, it's almost like they're classically trained. So it's really, yeah, really good they, stuff. It is. Yeah. So they're, they're uh, I heard they waited until now to do the service so that they could sing. Okay. Yeah, oh, it, yeah, it's part of it, but, but it was also on her birthday. So yeah. August 10th. So that was, uh, and so it's all, what, I, what I meant to say is, if you wanted to check that out, and uh, it's, it was, it's it's well it's a well done service. I'm the MC, so that's about all I did. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's on our YouTube channel. It's, it's on Monks, but Monks are taking it down after weeks. So it'll be down after Wednesday. So if you get a chance, you can get it to by our YouTube channel, this one here that you're looking at right now, or through the web, our websites. Um. That's about all I can think of. Anything else I should be thinking of? Oh, Monarch. So Monarch Bible Camp is this week, and we do have a the, the accommodations were taken care of. So thanks to uh, various ones that have pitched in to take a billet, and the, apparently the young ones are driving. <laughs> They've got cars. But Lynn says thanks to all the gals who provided snacks. They did. They need a snack. They've got to feed the troops and the troops. There was supposed to be a, a max of 35. I think we have 47 signed up. So you want to hear some noise, come on into the church this week and check it out. Um, yeah, I guess that's my announcements. And I will turn it over to Melissa and to... Jen is filling in on the tech today. Jen, yay! Doing a great job. Um, let her start.
Thanks, Melissa. That was in the, in the sweet by and by, in case you didn't. It's great if you know the hymns and you can sing them in your head while she plays. <clears throat> we are going, that, and that was a, a Serengeti, uh, Serengeti Park. Right? Yep. We're going to sing Love Lifted Me once I get my guitar on here. What do we do for an intro here? The chords. Okay, let's stand. Checking in. Um, okay, let us continue to worship the Lord as we present our offering. Um, I was thinking Wayne, Wayne and Jan Cox could do it today. Wayne, haven't done it for a while, so. Well, Wayne, thanks for helping out. Put this in here. Jan, good to see you. 
All right, sing your song. And as you recall, I put my hand over here for sound reasons. <laughs> we give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. I trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Okay, prayer time. So I've added Ernie and Linda Collette there for today anyway. So he's asking for prayers to deal with pain. And that's uh, not fun. Two. Olive Cooper. Okay. Once again, we have... Lynn has taken a few people off the list because we don't know much about it, what's going on with them, or we think they're doing okay. Lynn. Yes. Yes. Oh, she is, isn't she? Um, yep. So we've been praying for Caroline Hunter. She had cancer, and she died a couple days ago. She's a, an Inglesby-connected person. Uh, she and her husband, Harry, are of Irish origin, and uh, they're not having a service for Carolyn, but they're going to, uh, she's going to be cremated, and next spring, Harry's uh, taking the ashes back to Ireland. So, yeah, some of you may know her. She was also involved with the Rotary Club for, for a bit here. Anybody else? Okay. Well, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this privilege and duty of prayer. Lord, uh, we can cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. We thank you that you've directed us and taught us to pray. Continue to teach us and move us to pray, Lord, at all times. Uh, Lord, that we might know your peace. Lord, so uh, we thank you that we can enter your presence through your work, your finished work, Christ, the work of the cross, the work of your sacrifice. Uh, through your blood, we enter behind the veil into the Holy of Holies, Lord, to your throne, Father. And we, we lay these requests before you in Jesus' name. And we, uh, we seek, Lord, for ongoing help in Ukraine and an end to the war there, Lord, the, the horrors that have been happening and the hostility. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would put a stop to it, Lord, and, <clears throat> and deliver these people. Uh, lift that all to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. And we continue to seek, Lord, an end to the, um, the pandemic, COVID-19, and uh, all the ways it's um, affected our society, that, Lord, we, we would get back to, to more and more normalcy. Thank you that that is slowly happening. Lord, we pray that you would continue to protect those who are vulnerable, to give us wisdom, to uh, give us uh, resources and vaccines, and watch over those um, who are on the front lines in, in whatever way, shape, or form. Lord, those who are sick would get better. Those who have lost loved ones would be comforted. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. And in your love, Amen. answer. And Lord, we pray for the family of Marion Sedgwick, for Craig Nickel, Richard Tilson, for Vicki, Jane Johnston, Brian Newstead, uh, Chris Bishop, Sr., Ted Schultz, Alex Buxy, Jessica, Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We remember Olive Cooper, Ernie and Linda, Steve Wigan, Darko Knezovich, Don and Karen Tran, Chris Rusk, Maureen Duquette, the family of Carolyn Hunter, Allie and Courtney, Carol Parnell. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We pray for Mark Beach and his wife, Teresa, Ron Mark Jr., Judy Davis, John Payne, Kelsey Barnum, Gary Swaggerman, Paul, and Victoria Ancaster. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. We pray for Murray Misko, and Walt Griffin Jr., Bernice Ross, Isabel Jolly, Don, Corey, Cliff Smith, Deborah Waterhouse, and others that we remember in the quiet of our hearts.
Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I shall call Gwen back up to read our scripture. Lead us in our prayer. Please join me in the prayer of illumination that you see printed on the screen. Let us pray. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the New Testament, the book of Hebrews, chapters 11 and part of 12. Um, with Harry's indulgence, I just thought maybe a quick word of explanation as to what you're going to hear might be of some help. The passage is part of an extended discourse on faith, being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Throughout Israel's history, people were living by faith when they died. They were commended for their faith, but they did not receive the things that were promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. We are the recipients of the promise, Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, whose act of salvation extends both forward and backward through time, throughout eternity. Please listen now for the word of God. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. They were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. May God bless this reading to understanding and our living. Thanks, Gwen. Let's sing How Firm a Foundation, You Servants of God. How firm a foundation, you servants of God, is laid for your faith in God's excellent word. What more can be said than to you has been? To you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. Fear not, I am with you, oh, be not dismayed, for I am your God and will still give you aid. I'll strengthen and help you and cause you to stand, upheld by my righteous, omnipotent hand. I call you to go. 
I have a little story about that song. I, I, I've told 30 years, you start to tell stories over again. So, you know, I, I'm just going to run with it because <laughs> nobody remembers it anyway. <laughs> My friend, uh, it's interesting how they've changed the words, you know, how firm a foundation, ye, ye saints of the Lord, was actually the, you know, what we most of us, a lot of us grew up with. Now this, this has got changed to you servants of God, which is fine. Uh, but uh, one of the lines that got changed, I wonder because it, uh, if it's because of this. So when I was in my, the first pastoral charge I worked in, and I would pick up the hymns, and I called the organist, and I told her, you know, how firm a foundation. She says, oh, you who to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, what the? I was a little bit offended. You who to Jesus? Because the line used to read, to you who to Jesus for refuge have fled. <laughs> so, she, so, but now, so now notably it's changed to, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. So it's taken out that little ambiguity there. Yeah. Yeah. End of story. Let's pray. Lord, as we consider your word, help us. Uh, Work in our minds and our hearts and our wills to hear your voice, Lord, and uh, as you speak to us through your word. Help us, Lord, by your Holy Spirit. Pour out your spirit upon us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a, there's a story in the Hebrew Bible, a.k.a. the Old Testament, uh, that is kind of re reminds me of the passage we have today. It's, it's the story of Elisha. Now, Elisha is not the same as Elijah, remember? El so Elijah was first, and Elisha was his successor, who asked for a double, uh, a double dose of his spirit. Um, so in the sto this one story about Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 6, um, Elisha, he's, so, so, uh, he's in Israel, which is the northern kingdom, and the enemies are trying to, to, uh, to, to, to conquer them. I think it's the Arameans. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, the Arameans have been coming, but every time they come in, God tells Elisha or Elisha um, what they're up to, and he tells the king, and the king's ready for them. And every time they turn around, they're you know they're countered very, very admirably by the by the Israelite army. And the, and the the Aramean king says, you know what's going on here? It must be a spy. And they say, no, 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 it's Elisha the prophet. He's he's getting the word from God. So anyway, so they have it in for Elisha. So they surround the city where Elisha is, and he, he's got a servant with him, uh, and uh, his servant. Look, comes out in the morning, and they're, they're just, they snuck up at night, and they're surrounded by the horses and chariots of the enemy. And he's freaking out. He's, he's sweating buckets. He's, ter he's terribly upset, and Elisha doesn't seem to be sweating it at all. No big deal. And he says, what's going on? He says, oh, he says, don't worry. He says, those who are with us are way more than those who are against us. It's a famous, famous verse, actually. <laughs> and uh, uh, he says, what do you mean? Open my eyes to see. So God, through Elisha, opens the eyes of the servant. He looks around and he sees just a massive, huge army of uh, uh, horses and chariots of fire all around the enemy. He says, oh, I see. <laughs> so this the invisible world that's around us that he got a glimpse of that kind of we're getting here today. Um, when we get to chapter 12, so this is the, the end of chapter 11 and a couple of, couple of verses in chapter 12. But at the beginning of chapter 12, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. So we're going to think about that today, this great cloud of witnesses. I'm calling them pioneers, uh, pioneers of the faith. So it, it kind of reminded me of this, that, that we, we can't see them. They're not visible, yet Scripture tells us they're, they're there. Um, these people are pioneers of the faith that we're, we're reading about. Last week, we, we looked at some of them. At the beginning, we looked at Noah, Noah and the building of the ark over you know, decades just trusting that God had <laughs> knew what he was doing and that this would really happen, and he goes ahead and does it. Sarah, who has a baby when she's 90. Abraham is 100, and he believes, you know, that God's promises will come true. And there's a few more in this passage that are quite, quite intriguing, actually, that I wanted to just add to the list a little bit. So, for instance, verse 31, they've got the prostitute Rahab. <laughs> she's, she's raised up for us as this woman of faith, which is kind of intriguing, you've got to admit, in the Bible. Uh, by faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed. So the story of Rahab, so Rahab was a, a Jerichoian, probably a Canaanite, and that lived in the city of Jericho. And when the Israelites came to conquer, you know, the, the promised land, they came across the Jordan, and, uh, and the first big city they come to is Jericho. It's a good, huge, you know, for, well-fortified, big wall around it. 
And uh, so Joshua, the leader of the Israelites, sends Rahab, to, or not Rahab, sends spies to go to the city of Jericho to, to see what the, the story is. And they go into the city and they find out, oh, these people, they're scared silly of us. You know, they're terrified. But word gets to the king of Jericho that, uh, you know, the, these spies are about. So he starts to hunt them down and they hide at Rahab's place, this prostitute. They, they, and she hides him. And when the, the, the soldiers come to search for them, she's got them hidden in a, like, under... Piles of something. <laughs> I forget all the details. And so, but, but she puts her faith in their God, the God of Israel, although she's, you know, a Canaanite. And she says, well, you guys, you, you guys look after me. And they said, okay, well, here's what you do. You hang this, you know, red, red cloth thing, I guess. I forget what, exactly what it was. Some red thing at the window to mark the window and make sure you gather all your family in there. If they're not in there, they're going to, they're going to, they're not going to make it. And sure enough, so then, it's actually in the verse before here. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. So there's a whole story in the Hebrew Bible about, you know, them walking around the city, blowing the trumpets, and the walls of Jericho fell flat. And in they came and they destroyed the city except for Rahab. You know? So by faith, this woman who was a Gentile, a pagan, but puts her faith in God and the God of Israel, she, she gets rescued. Interestingly, just a little addendum to that, if you jump into the New Testament, uh, Rahab is mentioned again in, in the genealogy of Jesus, in, a, in the, I think it's the first chapter of Matthew. And, uh, and it would appear she was a descendant of Jesus. So, uh, it, you know, it doesn't crystal clear, but it looks like he, she was something like the great-great-grandmother of King David. Just a little song. <laughs> something of interest. <laughs> so, uh, verse 35, women received back their dead, raised to life again. So there's the hint of the resurrection already happening in, in the Old Testament times in the uh, Hebrew Bible. So uh, bo with both Elijah and Elisha, they would stay with these women who had sons that died. And in, in both cases, they, they, they prayed for the sons and uh, they came back to life again. And this, this, is, this happens again in the Gospels. I mean, you know, it's notable that this, this happens again with Jesus. And Jesus, I think it's called the widow of Nain. And she is, the only per person in her family left is her son, and he's dead, and they're carrying him out of the city, and Jesus raises him back to life again and gives her life, her, her life back again, because basically she was dependent upon her son uh, to uh, financially, socially, the whole, you know, that, that world. Um, so that's by faith. Women receive back their dead to life again. All kinds of neat stuff in here, like uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you guys can get in on this. Uh, there's one here. Somebody, they quenched the fury of the flames. You know who that was? Well, let's go back to another. Who shut the mouths of lions? Daniel. <laughs> Boy. And then quenched the fury of the flames. Also in the book of Daniel. Hmm? The three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> these guys are all hinted at. One, it says, through faith they administered justice, which reminds me, and may, it may be referring to Solomon. Um, Solomon, when he became king, he was the son of David, he asked, God, God said, get, you know, ask what you want, I'm going to give it to you. So he asked for wisdom, as you re recall, and God said, that is, he says, because I don't know how to handle all these people and to administer justice, that's too much for me. <laughs> So God says, I will give you that, and since you didn't ask for it, I'm going to give you lots of wealth as well. So he's like the richest person in the world, and, the, and, one of the most, and perhaps the most famous in his day, wise. Uh, so there's this great story, I think it's in, uh, for, I forget, 2 Samuel? 1 Kings chapter 3, <laughs> let's say. So Solomon, uh, so the, another story with prostitutes. <laughs> Two prostitutes, both have babies in the night. One's baby, one, one's baby dies. And so uh, she gets up. She switches her baby out with the other baby. And in the morning, the other woman wakes up and says, hey, where's my That's not my baby. And so they have a dispute about whose baby is, it is, the, the living baby. So it's taken to the king. King Solomon, he's got this big burly guard with a huge sharp sword. And, and they both say, and the baby's mine. Oh, the baby's mine. He says, okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. Bring that sword in. We'll just cleave that baby right down the middle, and you can each have half. And the one woman says, she can have the baby. And the king immediately says, that woman's the mom. Amazing. <laughs> I love to tell that story. <laughs> so you know, just, just simple wisdom. And, you know, she gets the baby, of course. 
You don't want to end the story with somebody getting chopped in two. Just, no, that's not good. Um, you know, and the, story, the, the stories of people of faith, the pioneers of faith, just keeps un, unfolding and, and adding up as the, as the centuries go by. So, for instance, over 500 years ago, Martin Luther, um, who was a, a Catholic priest in his day, didn't like what he saw going on in the church. It was just too much um, deception, corruption stuff, and, and he, he decided that we need to reform things. He hammered 99 theses on the door of the castle in Wittenberg and uh, <clears throat> basically kicked off, uh, in many ways, the Protestant Reformation. He was a protester, and that's how you know, Protestant churches kind of started from. Um, a while later, around the early 1800s, uh, William Wilberforce was a British parliamentarian. And it, actually, I was, I, there was a guy at Lachlan this morning, um, my friend Dave, Dave Duncan, who's a retired United Church minister. He, he knew more about this than me, so <laughs> he helped me from the pew. Um, and uh, so William Wilberforce, for something like 45 years, had, had been on the forefront of trying to put an end to slavery, the slave trade, the abolition of the slave trade. Year after year, he would go back, and he was a member of parliament, but he was also a strong Christian. I mean, he, you know, he was a Bible teacher, and I think he preached too, but uh, he was a member of parliament. So he would bring back to parliament a bill to you know, end slave trade, end slave trade. 45 years. And it sort of gives you the chills, finally, in about, I think it was 1811 or something like that, uh, it, it was a, it, there's a story, but just, there was this light snow falling outside, and the parliament voted to abolish slave trade. And he died. Well, that's 45 years of, of uh, trying to get that to happen, and he died. Wilberforce died shortly thereafter. That's a man of faith, person of faith. Uh, Martin Luther King, you know, Martin, <laughs> named after Martin Luther. Martin Luther King... Others, they challenged, he was also, he was a man of faith, right? He was a Baptist pastor, minister. Um, he, uh, he had just a huge passion that derived from his belief in what's right and good and uh, doing something about it. Challenged segregation and racism in the U.S. Same kind of thing with Bishop Tutu in South Africa. And, you know, others, they brought about an end to apartheid, much, very much through faith. That's why there was so little violence involved with that. Back in 1925, people of faith joined three denominations together and made the United Church of Canada. And it strikes me that that is an act of faith, because that was no small thing to do. They believed that it was a, better, a bigger and better witness to our world and community to show a united front, you know, and not to have so many denominations. Can you imagine doing that today? Anyway, but, but just the, the love and faith it would take to get together year after year, uh, hammer through all the multitude of issues, you know, property problems and issues, administration problems and issues, not to mention doctrines and, uh, and, and hymn books and all the, the details of that. And they did it. And uh, they put it together back in 1925. By faith, our spiritual forebears established this congregation and eventually built this church. You know, we, we, see, we see the names of some of them on the windows as you go around here. In fact, my, um, my wife, who was a Roberts, her great, great grandfather's name is on the one window, and he was a, uh, from up in har the harbor, and he was a lay, uh, a circuit, lay circuit rider, a lay preacher around here. <laughs> so these are some of our forebears who, you know, who kept the faith and, you know, made it possible for our congregation to be here today. By faith, we carry on. You know, we're carrying on. We, we're proclaiming the gospel of Jesus in our, in our world, which is, to which it is somewhat foreign, or, or some, sometimes it's ridiculed. And, uh, you know, but, but we do it anyway. It's, it's kind of a mystery. What good is it doing? There's only just this handful of us here, and all of you online, <laughs> which is wonderful. But, you know, by faith, we know that doing it, 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 it is right, and it somehow influences the world. It influences ourselves, and we influence society. And, and we, we keep doing it by faith, because we don't always see immediately results, right? By faith, we teach the children. Now, we're not teaching a lot of kids in Sunday schools. So we don't have one right now. However, this week is Monarch Bible Camp. <laughs> and there's going to be 47 children screaming and yelling around. So be praying for Teresa, because by faith, she's teaching the kids. By faith, we pray for the sick. Like our prayers for the sick, you know, that's all about faith. We trust that God will intervene in their lives and help them. Uh, by, by faith, we care for the poor, because we believe that's going to help. It's gonna be, we comfort the bereaved. We fight for truth and freedom and justice 
as followers of Jesus. And our brothers and sisters have been doing this for generations by faith. So it isn't just this little list in Hebrews 11. The list goes on and on, and it continues to this day. So I think you know an, an analogous kind of thing is the world of science. <laughs> science has been developing, of course, for hundreds of years, thousands of years, arguably. And you know, look, look at what we've got today. We, who would have thought when when we were younger that you know our, our little uh, our little church services might be on TV <laughs> in a very small sense, right? Or that you would carry a computer in your pocket, or that people would you know be up in the moon or in, in uh, orbiting space stations. I hear there's quantum computers are about to come out, um, which are way faster than normal computers. Like these these things just leap, grow and leap uh, in leaps and bounds, but. It's not that people are smarter now, by the way. Arguably, maybe it's the other way around, but um, we won't go there. Sometimes you got to (laughs) wonder. Any uh, reasonable scientist will tell you that they are standing on the shoulders of those who have gone before. Like information, knowledge of how the world is, you know, of of nature, of not, it just just has built up over over the generations. I mean, we've had Einstein, we've had, you know, Newton, we've had Einstein, but, you know, the, people learn from them and, and built on that. And we are now truly standing on the shoulders of the pioneers of faith. And we're doing, this is the same thing in the world of the Christian faith. We're standing on their shoulders. And it's a tremendous advantage if you stop and think about it. We get to look back through history, and we should look back through history, <laughs> and see, oh, this was really good, or this was really awful, Avoid the awful, do the good. So, for instance, during the Reformation, things like soul, by faith alone was, was emphasized. Rather than all the, you know, the, the ways people thought they could curry God's favor by good works and paying money and you know, uh, being religious and going to Mass and all that. And, and Luther and the rest said, no, no, Scripture is quite clear. We, we are reconciled to God simply, solely, and only through our faith. God accepts us when we put our faith in Jesus Christ and then what he did on the cross. That's it. That's, that's just a huge truth to hold on to, to, to understand is, is, is integral to, the, to you know, uh, the foundations of the Christian faith. Sola Scriptura was the other cry of the Reformation, that we don't necessarily, we, you know, hu- human institutions have all kinds of rules and regulations, but they aren't necessarily from God, but Scripture is. That, those are good things. However, other things like, oh, let, in God's name, let's, let's uh, put up some residential schools and we'll, we'll get the savage out of the, the native kind of thing. Oh, what a disaster. You know, but, but it was thought to be, uh, in the, it was done in the name of God. And abuses happened, horrors happened. And, uh, you know, the Pope is now in Canada apologizing for these things. It just was. So, so we can look back and say, yeah, that was a, that was a horrible, foolish thing to do. And we, we can build on all those kinds of things and many more. It's a tremendous advantage. So after he's, he's talked about all these, these uh, um, pioneers, he says, God has planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. So, so you know, we're, they did it for us. You know, they, they, they followed Christ you know, for, for his sake, but also for our sakes. So then... Chapter 12 starts, therefore. Therefore means he's summing up the whole rest. There's there's some significance to telling us all about these people of faith. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Really, yes. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So the picture that he's painting here is like a huge stadium. Think Super Bowl. Just massive crowds in the stands. We are, we're in center field now, folks. It's our day to, to run the race or play the, play the Super Bowl, if you will. And we're being watched, according to this, by uh, so great a cloud of witnesses. We're being watched. We can't see them, but we're told that, that they're there, and that's what's going on. And uh, that, that's told, us, told to us to encourage us, to strengthen us. Is let us that we might throw off everything that hinders and, and, and the sin that so easily entangles and run with perseverance the race marked out for us. The Christian life is a, is a race. It's, it's, it's not a sprint. <laughs> it's a marathon. 
And uh, we're, to, we're called to run it with perseverance. And how do we do that? Well, it's in the next verse. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the, the, the pioneer, that's where I got the word, pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So, you know, the secret of the Christian faith, and it's not really a secret because it's proclaimed all the time, but you have to tap into it and say, oh yeah, that's it. The secret is this, fix your eyes on Jesus. That means, you know, fix your eyes on him, trust him, study him, love him, and obey him, obey Jesus. And in him, you and I would find the strength and the joy and the purpose and love and eternal life. This is what our forefathers and our foremothers all around us in the faith have done. And they are watching to see us do likewise. Now we pray. Our Lord Jesus, we thank you for those who have gone before, the pioneers of faith. Lord, we're standing on their shoulders. Lord, help us to be mindful of that, to understand that we are, we are being watched. Lord, and to be faithful to you in our day and generation. Lord, to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Only by your grace is it possible. Lord, grant us the grace to put our eyes on you, you who are the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, and to find that strength and grace daily. Lord, to be the people you've called us to be. For we ask it in your name, Jesus our Lord, you who taught us in prayer to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us, both now and always. Amen.
nation, you servants of God, is laid for your faith in God's excellent word. What more can he said than to you has been said? To you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. Fear not, I am with you, O be not dismayed. For I am your God and will give, give you aid. I'll strengthen and help you and cause you to stand up. When through the deep waters I call you to go, the rivers of sorrow shall not overflow. For I will be with you your troubles to bless and sanctify to you your deepest distress. When through Oh